Hey guys, this is Elliot, and in this video I'm going to show you how to start coding in Python, C++, Java, R, and all of these other languages on an iPad, on a Windows PC, on a Chromebook, on any tablet, and even on a phone for free. I am a professional computer scientist, but I'm also a medical researcher at UCSF. Something that I've learned from working with people across different fields is that a lot of people are really excited about coding and want to learn it. But when you're a beginner, just downloading the software you need to start coding is really hard. And when people do learn how to code applications, they don't know how to share the work that they created with others. I feel that what draws a lot of people to programming is that they have a great idea that they want to share with the world. So I created some totally free software called IO that makes it as easy as possible to start coding and then to share your work with others. Originally, I created IO so that doctors and scientists can share and replicate research, but it can be used for a lot more than that. For example, Here's a little video game that I made, and you can actually write the code that created this game in minutes on IO. In fact, I've made a lot of YouTube tutorials that shows people how to go from no coding experience to making the video game that you see right here. But first, what even is IO? To get a better idea of what IO is, let's look at a professional application that I programmed inside of IO. Right now, we're looking at an application that I created called Cytoscape. Cytoscape makes it really easy for doctors or biologists or mathematicians to create graphical networks. Graphical networks are a really useful tool that scientists use to help explain the complex relationships between cells or molecules that occur in living organisms. With my software, scientists can build graphical networks with just a few taps of their fingers. With IO, not only can you build professional applications, but the code that you write to do it looks beautiful. All of the code for this professional application is inside of one file, which is beautifully organized into sections that explain what the code does. Another really cool thing about IO is that you can actually see the pieces of the application as you are building it. So for example, the editor box that you see right here inside of the source code is the same editor box that you see inside of the Cytoscape application. But I didn't just create IO to give people a better way to code. The real reason why I created IO was to give people a new way to share their code. So I created a decentralized website called IO Online, where anyone in the world can run the code that you create. Now, in a later tutorial, I'll talk more about what decentralized computing is. But for the moment, you can think of IO Online as a website that we all create together. So for example, in the IO Newsroom, you can see all of the great software that other people have published in the last month. IO Online is a great tool for you to work together with your friends. To give a better idea of how this works, I'll show how a programmer, a doctor, and a data scientist can all connect using IO Online. So let's start our story with the programmer. Let's say the programmer creates a really useful piece of software, like Cytoscape. Now, this software gets the attention of the doctor. The doctor may not know anything about programming, but he's able to launch IO and then use Cytoscape to create a graphical network that gives important information about a type of cancer that he's studying. The doctor then uses IO Online to publish the important results that he found. Now when we refresh the IO Newsroom, we'll see the doctor's results at the top of the page. 
Another cool thing is that IO Online instantly creates a website where anyone in the world can view the doctor's results. They can even click different pieces of the doctor's graph to get a better idea of what the data actually represents. Now, let's say this graph gets the attention of a data scientist. The data scientist can extract the data from the graph that the doctor created, and then he can use that to run some statistical analysis and learn more from the data set. And all of a sudden, when you combine the work that these three people did together, you have results that can actually be published as research inside of an academic journal. But our doctor, data scientist, and programmer are not the only people who benefit from publishing this work on IO Online. Let's say that another scientist read the paper that our team published, and now they believe they can use the code and data from that paper in their own research. Well, all this scientist has to do to get our team's work is click the download button on IO Online. Then they can go to the downloads folder on IO and they'll see our team's project. From there, they can open up the code that our team created. And then, with the click of just one button, they'll run all of the code and data the exact same way that the programmer, data scientist, and doctor ran the work. So, with IO Online, academics can instantly share and replicate each other's work. And that totally changes the way that science is done. But remember, IO is made for a lot more than just academics. With IO, anybody in the world can use any device to share the work that they create for free. So, right now, you might be wondering how did you build all of this? And the answer is I had a lot of help from other super talented programmers. For example, when you look in the corner of IO's home screen, you see two names there Jupiter and IO. So, what's Jupiter? Well, you can think of Jupiter as being the original software. It's what allowed people to do coding inside of a website. Right now, there are thousands of Jupiter developers that are working together to change the way we code. So, I wanted a version that allows people to instantly code in any language on any device and then to be able to share their code with others. So, to do this, I took the original version of Jupyter, then combined it with the ideas of other coders, and then combined that with some of my own ideas to finally create IO. Okay, so now you know what IO is. But how do you actually start using it? So, you may have noticed that I've been doing all of my programming online at this kind of weird looking website. So, right now, you might be thinking, oh, all I have to do to use IO is to go to this weird website. But not quite. With IO, you don't go to a website, instead, you launch a website. And that might sound difficult to do. But it turns out it's actually really fast and easy. And this is because of the revolutionary advances that have been happening in cloud computing. So, when you do cloud computing, you can think of the actual physical device that you're holding as being more like just a video game controller that you use to then control a Jupyter website. And we're going to create the Jupyter website that we use on the cloud. Specifically, we're going to be using Google's cloud. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to launch a Jupyter website on Google Cloud so that you can code any language on any device. So the first step to do this is to go to Google Cloud's website, which is at cloud.google.com. Once you're on Google Cloud, click the Get Started for Free button. So, when you start using Google Cloud, they'll give you $300 for the first year. But what do you do when the free trial runs out? Well, don't worry, even after the free trial is over, Google Cloud still offers certain products for free. 
And luckily, this includes everything we need to run IO. Click the Agree and Continue button to finish signing up to Google Cloud. When you first sign in to Google Cloud, you'll come to a home screen that looks something like this. You can click the button in the upper left-hand corner to see all of Google Cloud's options. With Google Cloud, you can do a lot of really cool things, like build your own supercomputer from scratch. But for this tutorial, we're going to be using Google Cloud's most basic product, which is Compute Engine. So click that, and then click VM Instances. Compute Engine allows you to launch little mini computers on Google Cloud. In our case, we're going to launch a Jupyter website on a computer that we create with Google's Compute Engine. When Compute Engine is ready, click the Create button. So this is where we're going to create our cloud computer that runs the I.O. software. To launch the I.O. software on this computer, click the Deploy a Container Image button. We're now going to type the name of the container that has my software, which in this case is pupster 90 slash I.O. Pupster90 is my online username, so if you ever want to find me on GitHub or Docker Hub, look for that. Now we're going to click Advanced Container Options to set up our computer a little more. Click the three checkboxes that you see there. Now we're going to type in some computer commands that gives our Jupyter website a password. Under Command, type tiny, spelt T-I-N-I, and then click Add Argument. Then type minus G and add argument again. Now type password and add argument. Here is where you're going to type your password, but it can't contain any quotation marks or spaces. For example, my password 123 question mark is a password that you can use. Now we're going to scroll down to boot disk to decide the size of our computer's hard drive. Let's make our computer an SSD hard drive, because that runs faster. And then we'll give it 30 gigabytes, and then click Select. Click the two boxes under Firewall so that our computer is allowed to host a Jupyter website. And then click Create to launch your Jupyter website. And that's it! Congratulations, you just launched your first website. Although, you'll have to wait about 10 to 15 minutes for the I.O. software to spin up. All right, it's been about 10 or 15 minutes, so now our I.O. website is ready. We can go to our site by copying the numbers under External IP. Then open up a new tab, paste those numbers, and go to the site. Now we just type the password that we created earlier, and we're in. Inside of Apps, you can see that I.O. has the Cytoscape and I.O. Online applications that we talked about. But right now, let's prove that you can use I.O. to do your own coding. To write some Python code, click New and then Python 3. This brings up a Python notebook where you can start typing Python commands like Hello World. You can create sections to help organize your code. And with four lines of code, you can build your own computer program. This program prints Hello World to the screen the number of times that you select. In a previous video, I showed how you can build this app even on a smartphone. I really recommend that you check out my other videos, because you'll learn how to do coding and build cool applications, which you can then share with others. My dream is that people will use I.O. to build things that are totally beyond my imagination. One of my goals is to create a community of programmers, and a lot of the things that I've created in I.O. have come from people's comments. If you have an idea for new videos or how to make I.O. better, make sure to write it in the comments. Now, I'm always updating my software, so make sure you look for glitch fixes or other updates in the video description or in the video links at the end. For instance, I'm already working on an update for the video you're watching now that will go over the more technical stuff of getting started with I.O. Also, if you thought this video was cool, please share it on Facebook or other social media. Getting more people to watch this video gives me a greater ability to work on I.O. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. This is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys next video.